Hi, my name is Kim Stone, and I'm a horticulturist here at Boyce Thompson Arboretum. Boyce Thompson Arboretum is a about a 323 acre arboretum located in south central Arizona and our reason to be here is to teach people about how to grow and how to cultivate and how to use arid land plants from all over the world. Uh, today we're going to talk about ways of using the scarce amount of water that falls. We only get about 15, 16, 17 inches of rainfall here a year and it's up to us to be able to use that water as effectively as possible. So we created an entire garden that's about two and a half acres that takes water from a parking lot and funnels it down into a series of basins to irrigate our plants. What we're going to look at today is a demonstration garden. And the garden was, was originally created to show methods of, of harvesting water. And you'll notice here's the parking lot, which we're going to look at pretty soon, is right up here. And this is where the water falls. It's then funneled down into these series of basins throughout the demonstration garden, flooding all the plants. When everything fills up, it exits right down here into the natural drainage. Well, this whole parking lot right here is an entire collection area for the demonstration garden. And it was designed to funnel all the water that collects and falls on the parking lot to fall down through a series of basins in the demonstration garden and flood those basins during periods of rainfall. Now the bridge that I'm standing on is where that water from the parking lot goes and it follows right down this little rock line channel right underneath the bridge that I'm standing on and fills each successive basin throughout the demonstration garden and I'll show you where those basins are. In the demonstration garden there's probably six or seven main uh, basins. Right here is the wildflower meadow. This pipe right here is one of the, the pipes that connects these series of basins and you'll notice here too that when it's not raining sometimes we still have to irrigate our plants artificially. Here are two more basins. There's one right here on the right and there's another deeper one here on the left. And you notice some of these trees in here, these are called soapberry trees. And you find soapberry trees mainly in the desert along creeks and arroyos where there's a little bit of extra water. So they're perfectly suited to this basin right here. This is the very last basin right here. And since the water all has to go somewhere, once these basins are all filled up, it drains from here out through this pipe. And this goes out here into the natural drainage and, and towards Queen Creek through the natural open desert. Now even though this whole demonstration garden is built on a relatively large scale, what we did right down here to my left is to build what we call a runoff garden. And what that does is it's a low area that collects and is blocked and dammed up at the end. And it collects the water in just this relatively small area and funnels it all into these individual plants right here. So something can be done on a very small scale. Right here on this, this uh, particular part of the sign, you can see where there's a barrel that's collecting water off of the roof. And you'll see it's funneled off. It's kind of a standard method of doing it. And you can see here also where people are taking that water through a hose bib and funneling it off to their plants. This is something you can do easily on your own. This sign right here describes one of the great benefits of, of doing flood irrigation in general, but also the swales that we created here, these basins in the demonstration garden, is that with drip irrigation, especially in the, in the desert southwest, salts accumulate in the, in the root zone of the plants, and this causes a lot of distress for the plants. They're unable to grow very well. So you need to flush these salts out. A lot of times you have to do it with running your drip system an extra long time. The great benefit of having these swales and basins is that the water, rain, natural rainwater, does all the flushing for you. There's these three watering cans right here show the, the equivalent amounts of salt. This is one that comes from stream or CAP water, they call the uh, Central Arizona Project water, which has quite a bit of salt in it. Our groundwater that we pump from the ground, which is also salty, but look at rainwater. Hardly anything. Rainwater is essentially distilled water. As you can see around here, these, you get amazing amounts of growth from doing this sort of basin runoff uh, type collection of water. You're getting essentially what is flood irrigation. You get really tremendous quick growth with lots of deep root systems. And the best thing about it is that you're not adding any water necessarily. You're collecting all of this natural water and funneling it just by designing your garden correctly to get the kind of growth that you see around you today. <music>